energy and power. A light and heavy student run up the same height on the flight of stairs. What time did it take for each? What speed did each develop? What was the power of each? And does slower mean less powerful? So first off, we have to find our vertical height of the flight of stairs. So what I did was measure one step of the flight of stairs. One step equals 24.6 centimeters and there are 16 steps in total. So to get our total height, we multiply both numbers. We got 395 centimeters, which is 3.95 meters. So that's our vertical height. So this is our first student. She's our light student and her mass is 48.6 kilograms. Since we needed to find the time it took each student to run up the stairs, we decided to do three trials to get a more accurate number. After we timed all three trials, we added them together and we divided the total by three to get our average time. In this case, the light student took 4.2 seconds. Now our second student is our heavy student and her mass was 54.4 kilograms. We did the same as we did for student one. We timed her three trials running up the stairs to get a more accurate number. As we did before, to get our average time, we added all three time trials, divided the total by three to get our average time. In this case, it was five seconds. Now it's time to find speed. So to find speed, we use the equation speed equals distance over time. We have our distance, which is our vertical height, and we have our average time for student one. We plot those into the equation and we get our speed. In this case, student one took 0.9 meters per second. For student two, we did the same. We have our distance and we have our time. We plot that into the equation and we get her speed. In this case, her speed is 0.8 meters per second. Now we need to find power. So this is for student one. Our equation for power is work divided by time, but we don't have work. So to find work, we use the work equation, which is mass times gravity times height. We have student one's mass, we have gravity, which is 9.8 meters per second squared, and we have our vertical height. So we plot those values into the equation and we get 1.9 times 10 to the 3 joules as a work for student 1. Now we do the same for student 2, our heavy student. We have power equals work divided by time, but we don't have work. So we use the same equation, work equals mass times gravity times height. The result, 2.1 times 10 to 3 joules as a work for student 2. So again for student 1, our light student, we use the equation power equals work divided by time. We have work from the previous equation and we have our average time. If we plot those into the equation, we get 4.5 times 10 to the 2 watts as the power for our light student. Now we shall do the same for our heavy student. We use the formula power equals work divided by time and we get 4.2 times 10 to the 2 watts as a power for our heavy student. Our initial question was, does slower mean less powerful? Yes. Power equals work divided by time. Student one was faster than student two. Slower means more time, which means a bigger denominator, which equals to less power. Our light student, student one, her time was 4.2 seconds and her power was 4.5 times 10 to the 2 watts. Student 2, our heavy student, her time was 5.0 seconds and her power was 4.2 times 10 to the 2 watts. So to just sum it up, student 1 took less time than student 2, therefore making her power more than student 2. So yes, slower does mean less powerful. To find speed, we have our distance, which is our vertical height, 
and we have our average time. We plot both two numbers into our equation. <laughs> Daddy!